be set free. And look at what Jesus tells him in verse 19. He says, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in the capitalist how great things Jesus had done for him. And all the men did marvel. And all the men did marvel. Imagine this. This was a man that lived in the tombs. This was a man that was completely isolated from society. That people knew him. Uh, maybe they could have seen him as the town drunk. The town fool. And suddenly he comes back. He's sane. He's a human being. Filled with a love and compassion. That came from the freedom that God had delivered him. And now people are able to see. Not, not only are they listening to this message that this man is speaking about Jesus, but they're able to see the change. And that's why our testimony is so important, not only for those that have newly been converted, but also for us as Christians, when we're in our work, our work people look at us. They, are, they see how we behave. They see how we talk. And we have, if we have a filthy mouth, how are people going to listen to our message if they don't see the change and transformation in us? And testimony is so important, not only of what Christ has done for us, but of the power that is in us. It is so important for the world to see that this is the truth, that truly the saving grace of God is in our lives, and that truly we know Jesus, and that we are his disciples. We should not underestimate the power that we have. And one of the wonderful things that is amazing about God is that there is such a great diversity in God's people. All of us have very different backgrounds, and we all have different weaknesses, and we have different chains. We, we all had different chains of sin in our lives before we came to Christ. And what was once something that dominated us, now we dominate it and we use it as a weapon against the enemy and to show the world, look what Christ has done for me. So I just want to reiterate the importance of that. Listen, you may not have a extensive knowledge of the Bible, but you know that you've been changed. You know that you've been transformed. And listen, that is sufficient enough for you to be able to tell, listen, Jesus saved me. You can trust in Jesus. You follow Jesus and he will save you and deliver you as he's delivered me. Not all just Bible knowledge. Yes, we have. To, we should know what the gospel is. Every Christian should know what the gospel is. That Christ died according, that Christ died for our sins according to the Bible. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. That's the gospel. And those that put their trust in the gospel, that put their trust in Jesus, will receive the promise of God, which is salvation, the Holy Spirit that comes into our lives and transforms us. And as we walk with him, we are delivered from the power of sin in our daily life. Amen. I want to add a couple of verses. Romans 10, 9. Ever spoke about repentance. Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, this is something that you need to do. The the people that are, are receiving Christ, you need. You, there's a declaration saying, "I'm making you my Lord. Jesus is Lord." And believe in your heart. This is something that you have to believe. A lot of people think it's just saying words. This is something that needs to go into your heart. That God raised him from the dead. Why is that so important, brothers and sisters? Because that is the act of redemption. That is the price that was paid for your sins. You will be saved. Now I want to look at another scripture, and this is what my brother Javer was just talking about, and it's very important. Because a lot of people are going to ask you, well, how do you know this is true? How do you know that uh, Jesus died for my sins? And how do you know that this is this is all true? Well, Look what it says here. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Listen, one of the things that happened, even the people who crucified him on the cross, Jesus showed himself. He was proof that what he was saying, he did. He resurrected from the dead. And there's no other God, lowercase God, that people have that have done such a thing, that has living proof of the resurrection, living proof that he destroyed the power of death, and he has given us freedom. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Not only did he resurrect, 
but he came speaking about the afterlife, about the kingdom of God, the kingdom that God has prepared for us the day we die. So brothers and sisters, that is the hope that we have. Not only is it a, is it a hope, but he demonstrated this to the people. And that is what's so important, brothers and sisters, about the gospel, that nothing else can even come close to it. That this was not something made up, that Jesus did what he said, and he raised from the dead in order to give us freedom from bondage and slavery. Father God, tonight, we want to thank you, Father, for this wonderful message, Lord. And there are many people out there tonight, brothers and sisters, that are struggling, Father, struggling on how to evangelize, Lord. I ask you that today, Father, you open their mouth and that you give them the ability to be able to be bold, kind, and loving, that they may go, Father, and preach this precious gospel that you have entrusted in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We received an email from a listener who is asking for prayer and support for a battle that he's having and he needs a breakthrough. His name is Kevin. And right now, brothers and sisters, I would like you to join with me as the body of Christ that we may pray for our brother. Father God, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Father God, we unite. Your word says that when we unite, there is power. And Father God, right now we break through these burials of demonic strongholds, Father. And we ask you, Father, to send your angels and send your might to help our brother Kevin, Father, with his spiritual struggles today, Father. Father, we thank you because we know that you hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we thank you for listening tonight. Uh, we hope that tonight's broadcast has been a blessing for you. Remember, you can visit us at our webpage, redemptionandpower.com. You can also write to us at redemptionandpower at gmail.com. Visit us on Facebook. You can download our free app available both for Android and iPhone. Or you can also contact us at 305-320-7727. Uh, thank you again for listening tonight. We pray that the Lord bless you. with my ticket for a runaway ride